A Skylab astronaut invited all the former prisoners of war to watch these two launches, and we have asked Colonel Jim Lamar of Little Rock, Arkansas, to join us here and watch it with us. Colonel Lamar was shot down over North Vietnam in May of 1966, so this will be an entirely new experience for him, and if you're wondering about the very colorfully uh, wrapped cast that he's wearing, that's because the colonel has undergone surgery to repair an injury suffered a long time ago, some seven years ago. Colonel Lamar, uh, we don't expect you to say anything terribly profound, but I think you're going to be impressed by this sight today. Right, I think so, too. Yes, indeed. Well, we're very happy to have you with us. Jules? Frank, it's T-minus three and a half minutes for the launch of America's first space station, the giant Skylab on pad 39B behind us. Thunderstorms that could have threatened the launch are now moving north around Daytona Beach and seem to be bypassing the Cape nicely. Out there on pad 39B is the world's biggest spacecraft, this 100-ton monster. Skylab itself, and this is, the, this is the way it should look in orbit if all goes well, and indeed it has to look in orbit, before men can be launched. 118 feet high from the bottom of the cone here to the top of the telescope mount, the Apollo telescope mount, weighing 100 tons, really a three-bedroom, one-and-a-half bath house. It is so large that the only thing you can really can compare it with is a tractor-trailer truck on the highway. It is longer than this tractor-trailer truck would be. That's an idea of the enormity of Skylab as it is on the pad. Before Pete Conrad, Paul Weitz, and Dr. Joe Kerwin can be committed to flight tomorrow, however, these solar paddles, the Apollo telescope mount here, all these devices have to successfully deploy before they can be committed. As of now, at T-minus two and a half minutes, it looks good. And as we mentioned earlier, the Skylab crew will be launched uh, tomorrow on another rocket. That is, of course, as Jules says, all goes well today. Much must happen. Commanding the mission will be a veteran of the astronaut corps, Pete Conrad. Tomorrow's space flight will be his fourth venture into space. The scientist astronaut on this mission is Dr. Joseph Kerwin, a physician. It will be his first flight. And the same is true for astronaut Paul Weitz, who's been waiting seven long years for his turn in space. It's an all-Navy crew, one captain and two commanders. We are now two minutes and 20 seconds away from that moment of liftoff. And, Jules, we can't take anything for granted now because I remember the last time we were down here, we got to within 30 seconds of launch, and then we sat and waited for a couple of hours. Like, Hopefully that won't happen today. Like almost three hours. And the other thing that's being watched carefully are those thunderstorms that have bypassed the Cape. Pete Conrad's last flight, Apollo 12, our second mission to the moon, took off in a brilliant display of electronic pyrotechnics yes. from lightning. And Pete the other day said to the launch director, I don't want another one like that. No. It looks no. like he won't have it today. Let's now uh, go to launch control for these uh, last few moments. Arm across to the vehicle to carry the propellants and the power to the vehicle. The first stage engines will be building up 7.6 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. Liftoff uh, will follow an ignition at 8.9 seconds. We just passed the 90 second mark in the countdown. At 8.9 seconds in the count, we'll expect to get an engine sequence start on the five first stage engines of the Saturn V. They'll build up thrust. That thrust will be monitored. The vehicle will be held down for the full 8.9 seconds, and we'll expect to get liftoff right at T0. We're approaching the one-minute mark in our countdown at this time as it proceeds smoothly. Mark, T-minus one minute, and continuing to count. A water deluge system now has been turned on, activated at the pad area. Pressurization taking place now. The various tanks aboard the vehicle being pressurized. Switching to internal power. All stages switching now to internal power. All propellant tanks being pressurized. Count continuing smoothly. The water at the pad covering the uh, flame deflectors. Now we've passed the 30-second mark. Water also will be coming on to the decks of the mobile launcher at the ignition point. T-minus 20 seconds, and the countdown continues to go smoothly. Guidance release, T-minus 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. We have ignition sequence has started. 6, 5, 4, 3, 1, 0. And we have a liftoff. The Skylab lifting off the pad now, moving up. Skylab has cleared the tower. Mark 18 seconds. 
seconds. Pitch and roll program started. Saturn now maneuvering to its proper flight path attitude. Mark 25 seconds. seconds pass through max q still looking good saturn now at 11 nautical miles in altitude five nautical miles Lamar, range velocity now reaching 33 i'm always seconds. overwhelmed by that even even by the fact that there weren't any men on board today that makes it kind of different one minute 45 seconds past, but that's the first time you've seen one of those big babies go that's right that's got to be the most awe-inspiring sight i've ever seen in my life that is something tremendous do you believe men went to the moon jim yeah. yes Yes, I believe it. I sure do. But I sure would like to have been here to see it. Yeah. Golly. You missed the whole bit, didn't you? Yes, I you didn't learn about our landing on the moon until months later. Well, about five months later, that's right. And I learned about it in a kind of a peculiar way, but it was a real thrill when I did. Well, I hope that we have even better weather tomorrow for you so that you can see that thing arc up there. It kind of was lost in the clouds today. Weren't you impressed by the force, the, the shock wave coming across that cape? You know, we're some miles away from it. Of course that. I was, not only that, it's, that the, the, the wave began, but that it continued for yeah. so long after the rocket was there. Yeah. And they make it seem so easy, don't they? Oh, gosh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> just like child's play, but just think of the amount of work that went into it. Oh, yeah, that's what's so overwhelming. Colonel, you're going to go back to flying, too, Yes, much. sir, you bet I am. Can't wait to get back in the air. Right. Okay. First well, stage shutdown. So thanks so much. What's that? Mission Control has just confirmed. First stage shutdown on schedule, on the money, and second stage is igniting. Good. Good, good all the way so far. I'm having trouble keeping this thing in my ear here. And uh, the Saturn V, with that 100-ton Skylab on it, is now about 50 miles downrange, climbing through around uh, 50 miles altitude, and all looking good so far. A lot of uh, very important things have to happen once the, uh, once the Skylab actually gets into orbit before the astronauts can go ahead with their, uh, with their launch tomorrow, because they're, they're not going to go up there uh, just to launch. They, they've got to be able to go on board that Skylab and then begin that 28-day stay. It'll be a long afternoon of being sure those solar panels, the workshop panels, the Apollo telescope mount panels all deploy that 20,000 different pieces of hardware aboard that 100-ton workshop deploy and are working properly before Mission Control in Houston will commit the astronauts to America's first manned space lab flight, uh, which should begin tomorrow afternoon after this epic launching, tomorrow afternoon with the launching of Conrad, Weitz, and Kerwin. Right. Well, that is it uh, for now. Skylab is uh, heading for what we hope will be a successful orbit, and assuming all goes well, the astronauts will be launched tomorrow to link up with Skylab. We're very grateful to uh, Colonel Lamar for joining us here today, and we're going to invite you to come back tomorrow, Colonel. You and I will go up on the roof, and we'll watch this thing without the window in between us and the shock wave, and I think maybe it'll be an even more overwhelming experience for you. Well, ABC News will cover the liftoff of the astronauts beginning at 12.30 p.m., 11.30 a.m. Central Time tomorrow. And we hope that all tomorrow will go as well as it has today. Colonel Lamar will be back with us once again. For Jules Bergman and myself, this is Frank Reynolds at Cape Kennedy. Good afternoon. This special report has been brought to you from ABC News at Cape Kennedy. We will return to our regularly scheduled programming after station identification.